Hello everyone. I welcome you all to digital learning from Department of Collegiate Education. This is I.S. Kumar Farzana Banu, Assistant Professor of Botany. In this video lecture, I am going to present first BSc, first semester Botany Phycology. Topic is Anabina, Blue Green Algae, its thallus structure. Coming to the quick recap of previous class. So, salient features of blue green algae are cyanobacteria, thallus organization of blue green algae, which ranges from unicellular forms to colonial and multicellular filamentous with branched or unbranched forms. Each cell is typical primitive prokaryotic, having cell wall bonded by a mucilaginous sheath followed by cell membrane, which encloses protoplasm which is differentiated into two regions, peripheral colored pigmented chromoplasm and central hyaline centroplasm with incipient nucleus. Coming to the learning objective and learning outcome. Learning objective is to study the morphology of thallus and cell structure of anabina. Learning outcome is gain knowledge of typical blue-green algae that is anabina, thallus, organization into colony. Coming to prerequisites. Salient features of cyanobacteria that is commonly called blue-green algae. Detailed study of thallus organization in blue-green algae and detailed structure of typical prokaryotic cell. Coming to blue-green algae anabina. So, according to Fritsch classification, so this anabina belongs to the division Cyanophyta, class Cyanophyce, order Nastacales, family Nastacase, genus Anabina. Anabina is free floating aquatic freshwater filamentous blue green algae living in ponds, pools, ditches, lakes, etc. And some of the species grows in terrestrial habitat also and some species are found growing in endophytic i mean found growing endophytically in coralide roots of cycas and they are also found growing in anthocerous thallus and they are also growing in pteridophyte or fern that is azolla leaves where it leads a symbiotic life coming to the other point these anabina they are free floating filamentous phytoplanktons. It forms a common component of algal blooms. And some of the common species which are found are Anabina planktonica, Anabina spheroides, Anabina spherica, Anabina azole, etc. Here, the plant body of Anabina is a simple unbranched filament. Usually, few filaments bounded by the plant body is simple unbranched filament usually a few filaments bounded by mucilaginous mass floating on the surface of water. Each filament of anabina is known as trichome with uniseriate linear row of vegetative cells which are placed one above the other. The cells are oval or barrel in shape and they are prokaryotic in nature. Each cell has definite cell wall made up of hemicellulose and cellulose as well as pectin material. Cell wall is followed by plasma membrane or cell membrane and protoplasm. So this protoplasm can be differentiated into two regions, outer colored pigmented chromoplasm and centroplasm which consists of incipient nucleus. So the things whatever I had told you, everything is there in this image. So a part of the filament bearing heterocyst and arcanates. So a single filament consists of row of cells placed in one above the other. And here there are three types of cells. One is vegetative cells, the other one is arcanates and also heterocyst. So this is a single filament which is enlarged. And next slide, so 
In this, we can notice the so-called heterosis. Here, in the trichome, at regular intervals, you will find the yellow colored thick walled globus or ovoid shaped structures. So, which are quite thick and large and they are called heterosis. So, the heterosis may be terminal or intercalary in position. Each heterosis bear one or two button like structures, they are called polar nodules. And coming to the, the heterosis is a distinctive character which helps in nitrogen fixation. So, which are, which is having an ability to fix atmospheric nitrogen. So, hence it enriches the soil fertility and this anabina is used as a biofertilizer in the rice fields by almost all farmers. And each character, I mean each vegetative cell, which is a typical cyanophysian cell, is a spherical or barrel or subcylindrical in shape. Each cell has cell wall which is thick three layered, made up of three layers. So that is cellulose, hemicellulose, pectin. Inner to this encloses cell membrane and protoplasm. And whatever I had told you, a typical anabina cyanophysian cell has the following characters. I told you just now, cell wall which is three layer uh, followed by, so above that bounded by mucilage and inner to that it encloses a cell membrane. So within that there is a protoplasm. So protoplasm has, so which is differentiated into colored peripheral chromoplasm and central centroplasm. So the central centroplasm is higher line which is occupied by only DNA that is the genetic material without nuclear membrane and nucleolus. Whereas in chromoplasm in addition to the pigments, colored pigments, you can see thylakoids. So thylakoids as well as ribosomes which are 70 stack and in addition to that one gas vacuoles and all other uh, I mean uh, uh, reserve food material that is starch and oil uh, lipid oil uh, globules etc. And coming to I uh, just now I told you uh, whatever the cyanophysian cell has protoplasm outer pigmented chromoplasm uh, consists of uh, pigment granules thylakoid contain blue dominant pigments that is phycocyanin uh, uh, phyco, uh, C phycocyanin and C phycoerythrin in addition to chlorophyll A, beta carotene, xanthophylls and whereas in this case in addition to pigmentation cell organelles are completely absent and coming to the reserve food material is nothing but cyanophysian starch. The centroplasm consists of nucleoid or incipient nucleus wherein this is hyaline in nature only genetic material in the form of DNA is present whereas so it does not have the nuclear envelope as well as nucleolus which is absent. In that case this type of nucleus is called incipient nucleus and the life cycle. The life cycle is haplontic. So haplontic type and uh, the plant body is haploid gametophyte, haploid and here no alternation of generation coming to the last point that is reproduction takes place by vegetative method asexual method and there is no sexual method, methods. So these are the references and thanks a lot for watching my presentation.